I mentioned that one of the remarkable features of Paul's ministry was the way he developed leaders in those church plants. The only way he could leave a church in a short amount of time and not only expect that church to be healthy, but to expect that church to actually reproduce and plant other churches was to leave very well-trained people. But he didn't only do that. He recruited future ministries, uh, missionaries, out of those churches that he planted. Take a look at this list of Paul's co-workers. And what I've done is along this column, I've listed the different churches that these co-workers come from. For example, Timothy came from Lystra, Gaius came from Derbe, Aristarchus and Secundus came from Thessalonica, and so on. And what is remarkable is the number of churches that produced co-workers of Paul. Now, these were mostly co-workers who traveled with Paul. These were future or missionaries that he recruited. I call this recruiting workers from the harvest for the harvest. In other words, as Paul saw great opportunities opening up in front of him in the mission, he didn't go back to Antioch, the sending church, and say in Antioch, hey, you've got to send more workers. We've got great opportunities here. He sought the new workers for the mission in the very churches that he was planting. He sought the new workers among the new believers that were coming to faith in Christ. Now, this is how multiplication really takes place is that you don't always keep adding from the outside, add from the outside. Sooner or later, adding from the outside has its limits. You can only do so much. But when you train up people from within the movement, it becomes a self-generating movement of future workers. And out of those future workers come the future church planners. That's how you get to church reproduction. That's how you saturate a region with the gospel. That's how you have additional missionaries who pioneer whole new regions. And so this I find an absolutely fascinating feature of Paul's ministry. And the interesting thing is he doesn't really explicitly talk a whole lot about it, but you see it as an example in his work. And so Paul recruited new workers from those churches as a part of his church planting practice. Now, I mentioned that the question often arises, uh, do, should we plant churches the same way that Paul did? Should we, is that the biblical way to plant churches because Paul did it that way? Or has the world changed so much that, you know, that, that was for Paul's day and it worked for him, but, you know, we live in a different world. We have modern technology and we have mega cities and, and uh, you know, we live in a different place, so we, we don't have to do everything the way Paul did. And so this is a debate uh, among uh, Bible scholars, among mission experts. Perhaps the most famous person to say we need to return to the methods of the Apostle Paul was Roland Allen. And he wrote a classic book, it's been translated into a few languages called Missionary Methods, St. Paul's or Ours. Now, he wrote this almost exactly two, uh, 100 years ago in 1912. And um, he had been a missionary. He was a mission leader. And he looked at the work of what missionaries had been doing. And he said, you know what? Churches aren't reproducing. They're you know, dependent on Western funds and they're dependent on Western people doing too much. We haven't really empowered the local people. Something's broken. Something's wrong. So he went back. He read the book of Acts. He read about Paul. And he said, we need to go back to the methods of the apostle Paul. And that means that, you know, Paul did not spend a lot of time in the churches. He says, I myself more convinced than ever that in careful examination of his, St. Paul's work above all, in the understanding and appreciation of his principles, we shall find the solution of our most present difficulties. Now, 100 years later, a lot of people are saying the same thing. We've got to go back to the Apostle Paul. He says, at any rate, this much is certain that the Apostles' methods succeed exactly where ours have failed. 
And so he says, let's critically examine the way we do church, the way we do mission, the way we plant churches. Let's look. Maybe even though Paul lived in a different time, maybe we need to learn from him. Maybe we're just doing it wrong and his ways would work today. He says empowerment. Paul did not st stay around for a long time. He empowered the local people. He entrusted them to the Holy Spirit. He believed that God would be in work in them, that he didn't have to hover over them like a mother, but they should raise up and they should be their own people, discerning God's leadership under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Self-sustenance. He said Paul didn't bring any money to the churches he planted. If anything, he took money from those churches back to Jerusalem for famine relief. He said these churches were planted in a way that they could be sustainable with what they had. They didn't have to get resources from Antioch. They didn't have to get resources from Jerusalem. They were planted up in a way that they could be sustained locally. Of course, they didn't have a lot of bills for buildings. They didn't pay people for ministry, at least not much. Most of the pastors were lay people or not paid ministries. And he said the church was simple. This is, of course, 100 years before uh, writers were writing about the so-called simple church today. He said the churches were basic. They avoid clericalism, professionalism. Empower the ordinary person to do ministry. Um, if we have this huge hurdle that everybody has to go to seminary for years and years and uh, has to go through all these hurdles, we'll never get to doing planting churches the way Paul did. He said avoid institutionalism. We've got all these layers of bureaucracy. We've got all these expensive programs and buildings, institutions. He said that just slows bogs everything down. We need to get basic. Now, not everybody agrees with him. Um, Eckhard Schnabel is somebody who's written 100 years later. His book came out uh, uh, called Early Christian Mission. Now, that is a two-volume work, and um, oh, I think it's somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 pages. <laughs> so it is a massive encyclopedia. If you want to do really scholarly study of Paul's mission, really of all the early first century mission, this is the place to go. Um, the original was in German, it's in English. I don't know if that's a lot, it been translated into other languages. But he has studied Paul and he comes to some different conclusion. Now, if you want the quicker version, he has a second book called Paul the Missionary. And uh, that book's only somewhere around 500 and some pages. So a lot, lot more manageable. <laughs> uh, and it only looks then at Paul. It summarizes a lot of the other book. But Schnabel, he has a slightly different take. But he does say Paul's missionary work did not end with the oral proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ and the conversion of individuals. Paul established churches, communities of men and women who had come to faith in Jesus, the Messiah and Savior. But he says Paul didn't have a grand strategy. He followed the Spirit's leading. Roland Allen, some others have said, no, Paul had a strategy, only go to the big cities and so on. He said Paul did focus on cities, but he also preached in some smaller towns. And he said Paul didn't have a particular target audience. He just preached to anybody who was willing to listen. And so he has a little bit of a different take than a lot of uh, people advocates today. Um, but be that as it may, I do believe that uh, it's always challenging to study the Apostle Paul. It's always challenging to compare our work in the church with what was going on in the first century. And uh, the world has changed. Uh, Paul didn't have to learn a foreign language. He knew Greek. He preached in Greek. Um, he wrote in Greek. And he was able to communicate with most of the churches fairly well. And by the way, where he got into a situation where he didn't speak the local dialect, namely in Lystra, that was where a lot of misunderstanding happened. So Paul didn't face a lot of the same things that uh, many missionaries face today. But I do think that his method of empowerment the way he empowered local people to do ministry, the way he raised up workers, the way he trusted the Spirit to be at work in their lives. He did not treat them condescendingly, but he came alongside and really 
uh, empowered and released them to do ministry. I find that very inspiring and I find that a real key. So whether you're a pioneer missionary or whether you're working in an existing church, this is an absolute key to effective ministry. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TBS Ministry. For more information, please visit tbsseminary.com.